Hello. So I am just gonna wait for a few people to join us and wait for our um, our featured artist, Carol, to join in and then I will invite her in and we'll get started. Hello. So we're just gonna give it a couple seconds here. Uh, to get some more people to join. We will be talking to Carol Young today. She's our featured artist at the moment. So if you are in the Connecticut area, definitely try to stop by and see her work. We have four new paintings by Carol um, that are up on the wall at the moment. And I see she's just joined. So I'm gonna invite her in and we're gonna start talking to her. Did that work? Sorry, maybe I need to see. There we go. Is that Got it? Am I on? Yeah, it looks like you're you're loading, but I can hear you. Okay. Okay, because I don't see you. Oh, all right. Well, I, I can see your screen um, loading, so maybe we'll give it a couple seconds. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. Yay. All right. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> Like I said to anybody who has, you know, been watching, like we, you know, you do the test run and it works perfectly and then you have kinks when the actual, when it's actually go time. So that's how, probably, that's how it goes a lot. It's probably me, me and technology don't get along. <laughs> well, it, it's, it moves quickly and there's always something new to be aware of, especially on Instagram. So I'm, I'm with you on that. So welcome, Carol. You're here. Yeah, you. good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Um, so, all right. So anyone who's just joined us, well, I'll do like an official start now. So my name is Christine. I am the marketing manager at Sorel. I'm coming out of my home office today. I'm gonna to apologize in advance. We do have a little work being done on my front porch. So if it's a little bit noisy, I'm sorry, um, but we'll, we'll push through. Hopefully it will be nice and quiet. So we are talking today to Carol Young. She's in her gorgeous studio. Um, and she is our featured artist this week. Um, so if you're in the Connecticut area, stop by and see her lovely work on view. Um, and I typically, the way I just like to get started is just, you know, where are you from originally? Where are you located now? And I know, and we're going to get into all the, all the details. If you're not able to people listening, if you're not able to tune in for the entire talk today, no worries. This goes, I post this video and also it will go on our blog and you'll be able to read the written um, discussion as well. We do get into maybe a little bit more in this in this one, but you'll be able, you'll have access to it either way. So thank you for people joining us for even five minutes. It's lovely to have you listening in and I'm really excited to to chat with Carol today. So Carol, take it away. Where are you from originally? Where are you located? Um, um, and then we'll keep great. going. Great. I'm originally from New York. I was born in the Bronx and then I grew up in Pelham, New York in a beautiful house that my dad designed and built, and then moved to Fairfield, Connecticut in 1996, and I'm still living in that same house. Nice, yeah. okay. Yeah. And how did you get started as an artist, but then also with your current medium and style, if, if there was any like major shift at any, any yeah, point? Yeah, sure. Um, I've always loved to draw and paint at a very young age. I could remember, doing things like, you know, copying comic books and the Archies. Mm -hmm. I'm dating myself. Um, <laughs> and I used to love to paint rocks with my friends. We would paint rocks and then sell them, you know, to our friends and neighbors for like a quarter. And when I made my first sale, I was like, oh my God, I'm an artist and I just sold something. <laughs> so I think I was hooked at that point. I absolutely loved it. And um, again, mentioning my dad, he was an architect engineer. So he was very creative. And I think that I got a lot of creative inspiration from him and kind of nurtured that. I was a fine arts major in college. And so I ended up taking a lot of painting courses and um, I was very influenced by Edward Hopper. He's one of my favorite artists. So I think his style really inspired me, his sense of light and his use of um, simplistic figures, but you know, the, the light was just beautiful. And I think I took that inspiration and kind of cultivated my own style and my own contemporary, you know, style from that. Um, 
So yeah, that's kind of it. I, I used to work more in oils. Now I'm more in acrylics. That's really what I like to work in the medium. That's my favorite right now. Nice. That, that's, that's actually, um, I don't know if people are watching and they're not familiar. Like I actually think shifting from oil to acrylic is very significant. So like, I think that's actually a big deal. Going from one to the other is big because if anyone is not like, you know, um, familiar and hasn't painted in them, acrylic dries really quickly. And you do have to be, you can, you know, you can write mistakes really easily, but you got to work kind of quickly. And I think you have to plan a little bit differently. So that's actually, um, is there something about acrylic that you like more than oil? Um, well, you know, it's funny because I first did the shift over to acrylic when I was pregnant because of the fumes. Hmm. And um, I, I just loved it. I love that you could um, be spontaneous with it. It is forgiving. You could, you know, definitely paint over it quickly with, you know, oils you had to wait. And, and then oil sometimes got muddy if you worked it too hard. Um, but acrylic, I think, is um, forgiving. And, you know, even when I'm painting on location, like outside, I think it's, it's really great and it's easy to use. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, de definitely. When working outside, I could see that being the case. So you kind of started a little bit to get into this, but how would you describe your artwork? Um, I think it's contemporary realism, if I had to coin a phrase. Um, you know, my subject matter is recognizable, but it's not traditional. Um, I like to paint a lot of structures, you know, like barns and cottages but old ones you know ones that have more history and more character um but you know when i paint them i do it in a more contemporary style where they're more sim simplistic more shapes rather than detail and a lot of you know bold light and shadow and i think it makes it more contemporary um but you know people can look at it and say hey that you know that's a barn or you know that's a cottage, but um, it, it's just taking it a little bit further and making it more contemporary. Sure. Um, and what is your, you, you mentioned sometimes you're working outside. What's your, what's your process sort of from loose start to finish look like, whether that's for a new series of work or just a single painting? Or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I really like to capture my own reference you know i'll be driving down country roads i'll look for landscapes that inspire me i'll take photographs and i'll bring them back to the studio and then usually i start with a pencil sketch in my sketchbook just to kind of get the composition down and you know get myself familiar with what i'm going to paint and then when i'm ready to go to canvas i coat the canvas with a cadmium orange in the entire surface and then when I do the sketch on the canvas, I go right with the paintbrush. So uh, usually I use like an alizarin crimson on a paintbrush. And that's how I sketch out, um, you know, my composition. And then from there, I layer the colors and the paint on top of that. And I like to let the red and the orange kind of peek through here and there because I feel it, um, it gives the composition more of a glow and more of an organic feeling. Um, and then if I'm painting on location, which I love to paint plein air, uh, which is, I guess, the French version for, for uh, painting on location, um, you know, really, uh, like I mentioned, acrylics are great because you can be really spontaneous and you can paint quickly because the light's changing. Um, and, um, you know, I love painting plein air because you get all the senses, you know, you can see your subject, but you hear and you, you know, you just feel your surroundings. And usually those paintings are more gestural and I really like the way that they come out. They're like little small gems and they could be studies for larger pieces, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. Do you find that you, um, are able, are sort of capable of finishing one completely outside or do you often have to kind of like bring it back and make finishing touches and stuff or I, I usually have to bring it back because yeah. um you know working so quickly and the lights changed and you know i'll shoot a photograph and i'll say okay this is where i left it off and then i'll bring it back into the studio and just touch it up here and there yeah because i'm usually on to the next what's, one <laughs> what's, the, what's the biggest size you can do outside um, you know, I keep them fairly small, you know, maybe up to um, if I'm doing 
like an eight by 10 or sometimes, you know, maybe 11 by 14 is probably the biggest I'll do. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, my easel doesn't really hold bigger pieces. Yeah, and if the wind's blowing, it's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> so I get that. It's definitely a sale. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what, like, can you identify a part of the process consistently that's your favorite or maybe, maybe not, maybe it's just all, all good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, as, as I mentioned, I think um, the first inspiration I love, uh, you know, if I'm driving and I, you know, see a, a barn and it's bathed in sunlight and I just stop and I say, oh my gosh, I know I can visually see this as a painting. And that to me is, you know, exciting. That's the beginning of the process. And, you know, I love taking that reference and then turning it into something else. So I think that's, you know, one of my favorite things. Yeah. And is there a part that's typically the most challenging in the process? Is there a part that you always kind of go like, uh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, as far as painting goes, uh, maybe it's the frustration of like varnishing and finishing the piece, you know, all of that stuff and putting the hardware on. It's my least favorite. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but. <laughs> and also, just as an artist, I think my least favorite part of the process is all the admin work. Um, it's all the paperwork and all of, you know, now with social media, as an artist, you have to keep up with that to promote yourself and sell yourself. And I think that's probably my least favorite thing to do. Like artists just want to paint, you know, they don't want to paint and then they want to just get it out there. Um, and they don't want to have to deal with all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> but yeah. it is a big part of the process. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. I, you know, being an artist now, and I, we've, this has been mentioned like more than once when we've been doing one of these talks that that's, that's a really tricky part. And you, you have to, just to be an artist, you have to be a social media manager and a marketing guru and all these other things. And you have to do it for yourself. And I think actually sometimes mark, you could market somebody else's product Mm -hmm. okay but when you have to do it for something that you've created it's actually even harder it's like this added layer that's difficult you have to be like look at this amazing thing i made you know and it's it's really it's really tricky to to frame to frame something that you've made in that way so that that's definitely an added challenge that i've heard before absolutely you're not alone in that one <laughs> um so we talked you talked a little bit about your color choices and how you start with these kind of like vibrant like cadmium uh and crimson and 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 really warm colors um and if anybody's seen your work who's who's listening i you know it's it really like to me it's it is the light and shadow and it's also the color that is so typically like it's it's really striking and you use a lot of contrasting colors you're really i think um dare i say masterful at kind of grabbing those cool tones and pairing them with warm tones and just having them if you looked at the if you looked at like a paint palette I would probably be like I don't know if that would work but you, you always make it work so um what's the process of selecting your colors look like is that intuitive or do you have to do a bit of planning and I know you said like you always start with that that warm but what does it look like when you actually like start to get into it are you are you thinking a little bit further out? Um, you know, usually when I start a painting, I kind of have it in my head, you know, what colors I want to use and I'll put out my palette. And then once I start getting into the painting, um, you know, usually the reference material kind of guides me, you know, whether it's going to be, a, you know, bolder palette or softer palette. But it's really when I start getting into it that I'm thinking, oh, you know what, um, maybe I want to pop a color in this. Maybe I'm going to change the color of that roof, you know, on that barn and I'm going to mm -hmm. make it, you know, red or I'm going to make it green. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just kind of goes from there and, you know, I'll play different colors next to it. Um, I know that, you know, if, if you're not an artist and you're, you're kind of looking at the sky, for example, or you're looking at a shadow, you might think, oh, you know, that shadow's gray or, you know, you're looking at a cloud and, you know, it's like it's white and the sky's blue, but there's so many different colors that are reflecting in those types of things. So in a shadow, um, I see all different colors. I see purples and I see reds and, you know, uh, blues. And I kind of keep that in mind when I'm painting. So I 
take that and then I amplify it. So, you know, a, a purple shadow becomes, you know, one of the biggest things of the painting and, you know, something that might draw you in. Whereas, you know, it's something that you might be walking down the sidewalk and see a shadow and not think twice about it. Right. But I think it's just pushing those colors and pushing um, certain aspects of the painting. And that kind of starts to identify what the other colors are gonna look like next to it, you know. Um, you know, a white barn with a, a purple shadow takes its own life. But then if you, you know, maybe look at a red barn, it's, you know, that shadow is going to be totally different. It's going to shift the whole color palette and the choice that I'm going to be using for that. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever find that you get into it and then you go, ooh, I've made a mistake. I've, I've gone too far down this road and I need, to, I need to back up and I need to kind of rethink this. Or are you like, is your intuition kind of typically just propelling you forward and you can kind of, you know, maybe work with what you've got loosely? I mean, I, I, I guess with acrylic, you're in a good position to say, oh, I've got to, I've got to back up a couple steps if you needed to. But do you find that that happens much? Yeah. It does happen. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be painting and I'll have to, you know, stop for a minute and look at it. And sometimes what helps is I take a picture of it with my phone and I look at it through the phone lens and it looks different to me. And I can, I can see, you know, oh, you know, that's definitely not working or, yeah. you know, that is working. And I kind of walk away for a while and then I get back into it and I might, you know, change things. Sometimes it's, just changing a little bit and sometimes it's changing a lot, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah good. it's definitely a process. Yeah. Um, so talking about, we've talked about color, but in terms of subject and you, you mentioned this in terms of your inspiration, like just being able to drive down the road and see, you know, a barn and, and that you have to like hop out and take a photo. Your work typically, um, focuses on the American kind of rural landscape, particularly New England. So my question is like, is what is so inspiring to you? Is it just like you've grown up here and, and this is sort of your, this is your home and this is your space? Or is there something that actually you can pinpoint that inspires you about the American sort of particularly New England landscape? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's history, you know, a lot of um, the landscape around me is just filled with history like the architecture i think in new england is really charming yeah and i you know like i love the the cape style and um the americana you know the barns and and all of that i just love it and i think about um you know the history behind these structures you know who lived there and um you know what was that barn used for and it intrigues me it really does and i think that the way that they're built too. Um, it's just different than you know, new construction today. It's just, I don't know, it's just got a very appealing nostalgic feature. And I, you know, I love to kind of capture that on canvas because, you know, they're, you know, they're being knocked down a lot of these older, smaller cottages and the barns. And it just breaks my heart every time I see um, an old barn being knocked down or, um, you know, just in Fairfield alone, we have a, a beautiful coastline and a lot of, you know, little cottages along the coastline that are just being leveled. And, um, you know, and I know that change is part of the process, you know, that, you know, change is inevitable, but um, it's really sad seeing, you know, some of these, you know, older vintage cottages being knocked down. And I like to kind of preserve that on canvas you know, as much as I can, because um, it's just, I don't know, it's just very beautiful here. And, yeah. um, you know, the historic part of, you know, this country is, is great. I mean, I love it. Yeah, I absolutely agree. My, my house is 100 years old. Mm -hmm. So I actually, it's old, it's older, it's 105 now. Wow. So, yeah. So I'm a, big, I'm a big lover of old, old buildings and old houses, too. So I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, are there any locations outside of New England that you've said like, one day I'd really like to try to paint there. That that speaks to me in, in some way. Yeah, definitely Maine and Nova Scotia. Um, 
some of the pictures that I've seen of those two places are just amazing. I think that I would just thrive there with inspiration and someday I'll get there to paint. <laughs> yes, I, I, I would love to see where you come up with from Nova Scotia. I was there a couple years ago and it is like, you know, talking about like old cottages and stuff. I think you, I, I can absolutely see you there. <laughs> so that makes a lot of sense. Um, and just like lighthouse, it has such a like coastal, like, fish fisher fishing vibe yeah. i feel like you would love it yeah um so i i'm here for that like i want to start that campaign <laughs> carol to nova scotia <laughs> there we go um so what's your favorite the night the lovely wonderful thing about new england is that we do have four seasons mm -hmm. typically sometimes yeah. a couple of them are a little too short but we do have four seasons. So do you have a favorite season to capture or to work in? I love spring and summer. Um, I love the light in those two seasons and the green grass, um, the green landscapes. Uh, to me, that's great. And then I, I can paint outside too. The, you know, the cooler right. weather, I'm kind of up in the studio doing my thing. But I think um, just you know the bright landscapes of spring and summer are my favorite do you ever get a little uh like of a of a creative block in the winter are you a little bit like not not overly inspired in the winter or do you does that still does your does whatever you've got going on it always just sort of like keeps you going it's just that you know summer and spring has a little extra well i think um you know i spend a lot of the summer uh, taking photos and getting reference. Mm -hmm. So all winter long, I'm kind of referring back to those photos and Got painting, it. and it, it makes me feel better. <laughs> right? Yeah, you I'm can still painting summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you? I mean, I don't. I'm sure I've seen some, but have you done many winter scenes? I've done. Yeah, I've done a few. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, Probably not the majority of my work is winter scenes, but you know, definitely, you know, I have a few um, out there and yeah. uh, they're fun to paint too. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah, a little <laughs> different. Um, well, and actually, that I think that the winter scenes speak to what you were talking about where someone might look at something and go, well, that's a white cloud, but you know, or white snow, and there, there's actually a lot more to it. So I'd imagine you, you get a little bit of a, you get a, you still have something to dive into with that. Right. Um, so you mentioned Edward Hopper being a big um, source of inspiration for you, which I can see definitely um, with the clean lines and the, the, the light and shadow. Are there any other artists that have um, inspired your work or that you just love? Like maybe it's like there's an exhibition of this artist. I need to I must go see it tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, well, Wolf Kahn was mm -hmm. um, a great inspiration. I love his work. And actually, I got to meet him when he was in Westport years ago. He had a book signing and he was just a lovely, lovely man. Very funny. And, um, you know, that meant a lot to me to get his book with his signature in there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, more of a local artist, uh, Charles Sovac, um, who's also gone, but he he was just a great artist and i took several workshops with him and he was a very good teacher um mm. and he was a plein air artist you know he painted a lot on location and the workshops i did with him was on location and i learned so much from him he actually lived in rowayton oh. uh close, close by but yeah i think um you know he was a big inspiration to me as well yeah cool um from your first First painting to your sort of current, whatever you're working on at the moment, how would you say you've grown or changed as an artist? Um, I think uh, I've learned how to kind of strip out the details, um, you know, not getting so caught up in the minutia of everything. Um, you know, I, when I paint, I approach things in a very simplistic way. So I'm kind of leaving it up to the viewer to put those details in, you know, I'm, I'm giving them enough information that they can, you know, definitely say, oh, there, there's molding around that window, but I'm not painting that molding, you know, all those little things um, I've learned to just let go of. Yeah. And it's, it's really, it's liberating because I, I feel that the process goes a lot smoother and it's, 
Um, it's more natural that way and the painting ends up being a little bit more organic. Nice. Um, and if you, you could give a piece of advice to your younger self as an artist, what would it be? Um, I would say just, you know, be more confident in yourself and in your work. Um, you know, I had a career for many years as a creative director working in a marketing agency and I would, you know, paint on the side. It was more of a hobby. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, I left that career to, you know, just be an artist. And um, I wish I had done it sooner. Yeah. You know, you, you're afraid to take that leap. You know, even yeah. in college, you know, you're a fine arts major, but you're leaving there thinking, well, I'm not going to just go out there and paint and be an artist and make money. So I have to, you know, do something that's going to bring in money. And that's, you know, I ended up going into advertising and marketing. And it's still creative, but it wasn't really my passion of painting. Right. So I, I think, you know, I would just tell myself, you know, just be more confident and go up and go out there and go. For yeah. It. Yeah. Th yeah. That, that, and that's one of the harder, mm -hmm. hardest things to do. Cause you're, you're really like putting a lot of like, it's a little pressure. It's a lot of trust in yourself. You're like, you have to go like sustain yourself in a different way. But yeah, yeah I think the biggest ri risks have the biggest rewards. Right. Mm -hmm. So here you are. <laughs> um, so in five words or less, and if you go over, it's fine. Um, what is your goal as an artist? To move people. Nice. I actually will say, you know, your, your, um, I've said that your color palette is, str is striking. I'm always like, wow. You know, when I, when I look at your work, but I think you really do capture that nostalgia of, you know, something that like really, it speaks to kind of a mem to memories, you know, of childhood vacations or whatever, it, what, mm -hmm. you know, that, that road down the street from my childhood home or whatever. And I do think you, you know, at least for me as a, as a viewer, I think you absolutely capture that, um, that nostalgia that you've talked about. So and that means a lot to me to hear that. Oh, good. That's <laughs> good, good. Um, all right. So now we're going to move into a little something. To, sorry, I'm like on my swivel chair. Um, yeah. Now for something different. Are you this? We're going to just do a couple of this or that questions to wrap up. So are you a morning person or a night person? I aspire to be a morning person. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I feel like when I get up early, I, I accomplish so much more and I really want to do more of that. <laughs> All right. Well, what's like early for you? Just out of curiosity. Um, if I'm up by seven, then that's a good day. Okay. All right. Um, coffee or tea? Ah, coffee first. Uh, but I do like tea. I'm married to a Brit, so we drink a lot of tea. Nice. <laughs> but coffee's my favorite. Do you have like a Do you have like a specific brand of tea in your home? Yes. We do the British blend, the Tetley British blend. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm a big um. I'm a big PG Tips fan. So. Oh uh, yeah, that's. that's so yeah um mountains or beach beach you guys have a pretty nice, nice coastline there so <laughs> i i could see that um true crime or rom-com ah uh, um rom-com first but i do like true crime all right so since it's september in new england apple picking or leaf peeping i like apple picking me too <laughs> Um, although I feel like it's it's a little bit of a tr that's like a trick question because leaf peeping often comes with apple picking. <laughs> so, that's true. <laughs> um, if you could be any animal, what would you be? Mm. Um, I'd like to be a bird because I think owls are fascinating. So I, I'd be an owl. <laughs> I have to say, I have to go back and look at our different artists who have answered this question, but I feel like bird is the one and, and the like it's different types of birds like i don't think anyone's ever said owl specifically but i am so intrigued <laughs> by like the psychology of an artist and like the the way that they're drawn to birds yeah i don't know that's so that. weird i mean yeah. weird and it kind of makes sense it's so like freeing and you can see the world from all these different angles that we can't see it from it's so i i want to like try to learn about this um <laughs> What is your favorite place on earth? Ah, uh, um, well, um, a big part of my heart belongs to the North Fork of Long Island. 
and my parents had a lovely vintage cottage there and growing up I spent summers out there and it's just it's a beautiful place it has the perfect mix of agricultural land you know farms but it's got a beautiful coastline and beaches and talk about you know old barns and and cottages yeah. there's so much inspiration there right. um yeah so two weeks I, there you probably have enough photos for like a, yeah. like a year <laughs> oh absolutely it's, yeah. it's fantastic and so um my husband and my daughter and i we have a cottage now um in the same area out there and we spend our summers there and we go out you know all year long we'll spend a weekend there and I just love it. So I'm hoping, you know, someday we'll retire out there because I think um, that's really where I want to just spend the rest of my days. Nice. That's awesome. Okay. That was my last question. So we can wrap it up here. We've been talking for about a half an hour. So thank you, Carol, so much for talking with me today. This has been fantastic. Um, to anyone listening, thank you so much for joining us. If you popped in a little bit late, that's okay. You can watch, catch, catch the whole thing um later i'm gonna post it and we will be doing we'll be posting a written a written piece as well so um again i'm just gonna say it one more time carol is her work is currently on view at the gallery so if you're in the connecticut or um new york area please stop by and see it um and that'll be up through this sunday um so if you can if you can stop by before then but of course you can always come by and see Carol's work mm -hmm. um, at any time. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. Um, and thank you, Carol, for taking oh, the time. You're welcome. Today. Thanks for having yeah. me. Good seeing you. Yeah, good seeing you. This is great. Have a good rest of your Thursday. It's today, Thursday. Today, Thursday. <laughs> the rest of your Thursday, Same. and have a great week. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.